Have you ever wanted to build your own PC, but didn't feel like you had the skills or the tools to do it yourself? Well, today we're going to show you how to build your own PC at home, and you might be surprised to find out that all you're going to need is a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. So stick with us, and we're going to show you how to turn all of these components into this. A fully functional home media or gaming PC. Now you might be asking, why would I want to build my own PC? Well, the answer lies in specialization. Many times you can't get the specific components that you want in a store-bought PC, such as a video card. Gamers, for example, require the highest specifications in video cards. For media PCs, you'll need the highest specifications in video cards and hard drives. You'll want the fastest that you can get. And the only way you can get it at an affordable price is to build it yourself. So let's get started. So before we get started, let's take just a minute to talk about location. You're going to want to pick a place in your home that has ample workspace, plenty of light, and preferably a tile or a wooden floor. This will help reduce static electricity. So let's talk for just a minute about the components that we chose. We purchased a Shuttle XPC barebone system, an Intel Pentium D dual core processor, an ATI Radeon video card, two gigs of DDR RAM, a serial ATA 500 gigabyte hard drive, and a DVD burner. So let's get started. All right, so this is the Shuttle XPC. This is a bare bone system from Shuttle that contains a power supply, a motherboard, a CPU fan, and other bare essential components to help you build your PC from scratch. If this is your first time to build a PC, we highly recommend that you start off with a bare bone system. The first thing you'll need to do is remove the CPU cooler assembly. This is done by loosening the four screws and simply lifting the unit. You'll notice there is a black protective cover over the CPU socket. You'll want to remove this as it is for shipping purposes only. Open the CPU socket and insert the processor, making sure that the alignment marks match. This is signified by an arrow and two notches on the processor and the socket. Now close and latch the CPU socket. It will be more difficult to close than it was to open as you are now applying tension to the processor. You'll want to apply heatsink compound to the processor, making sure that it is spread evenly. Failure to apply this compound will likely result in overheating of the processor at a later date. Now, reinstall the CPU cooler assembly and tighten the four spring-loaded screws. Do not tighten these screws beyond their stopping point as the spring-loaded screws are designed to apply pressure to the processor. Now connect the CPU cooler assembly's power cord to the main board, making sure that the pins are aligned correctly. Hi, I'm Leslie from MyPCHelp.com. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. If you'd like to see more of this video or other instructional videos, visit us on the web at www.mypchelp.com.